Speaker of the Vermont House of Representatives sat down with us this week to give us an update at the midpoint of the 2022 session. Democrats control both chambers and may be on a collision course with Governor Phil Scott on a range of issues from property tax relief to climate legislation. Madam Speaker, thank you for being with us. Absolutely. It's good to see you here in the building. It's very nice to be here. Um, this is crossover, the midpoint of the session. Uh, although you can always grant some exceptions, uh, will there be some that uh, don't necessarily die this week? Uh, well, we are in the thick of it and a lot is going on. So anything could change. Right now, things are on track, um, but uh, we still have a couple days left in the week. I'm extremely proud of all the hard work that's going into all these bills to help Vermonters through the pandemic and to just uh, get us through um, using this once in a lifetime opportunity we have uh, at this moment. So I'm, I'm uh, really proud of the work being done and look, looking forward to getting through crossover. Governor Scott has told reporters a couple of times now that the legislature seems to be wavering on last year's commitment to focus ARPA money on those five or six big areas like affordable housing and broadband and cell service and climate change and uh, economic development. I, I, is there a shift uh, within this building? Absolutely not. We share the same goals of making sure that we're taking care of our families, and that includes affordable housing and workforce development, that we're dealing with climate change, tackling our broadband challenges. And I think the thing that is different is that the guidance from the feds on how, what, and what we can use this money on is shifting and evolving. And so the goals are the same, but the money might be different. What about cell service? There is a proposal from the administration to build 100 new cell towers in places that don't have service now and aren't going to get service uh, under market conditions. Is there pushback from the legislature to fund that? Uh, we definitely think more work needs to be done around that. That was one that I do not remember coming up last year in these conversations, so that seems to be new. Um, I've gone back just to see, because uh, I don't remember us having the conversation about cell towers last year. It's been really focused on broadband, um, housing, childcare, those uh, types of policies to help our, our families and our communities. Well, about housing, everyone is screaming. Yeah. This week, the medical center announced they were building uh, a housing development specifically so that nurses they want to hire don't turn them down. Mm -hmm. That would seem sort of a emblematic of the problem we're in. Absolutely, and it's an interesting how these challenges around affordable housing and workforce and childcare all blend together, right? They're all related, and so I'm proud of the work that we're doing. Um, there's several bills working through the process when it comes to housing, supporting families, like our um, child tax credit, uh, money for after school. You know, we are, and we have a massive workforce development bill that's working its way through committees uh, at the end of this week. And I, I'm feeling really optimistic that we're putting a package together that can really make a difference for Vermont. There is some disagreement about how to spend the surplus education mm. fund. Uh, you've heard the governor's ideas. What do you think about them? All the ideas are on the table right now. You know, as, as you know, we are in crossover week, so committees are deep into taking testimony and hearing proposals. Uh, there are many proposals on the table from um, what the governor's talking about, what we're looking at how we can do more around um, career and tech ed and school meals. So uh, lots of, uh, lots more conversations to have before those decisions are wrapped up and made. School meals, meaning uh, universal school uh, lunches and breakfasts. That's correct. No cash register at the cafeteria. We are seriously looking at that proposal. But that's an ongoing expense. It is, that's correct. And so you have to find money beyond one time, you know, ARPA money. That's right, yeah. Is the legislature going to um, try to bar, uh, shall we say, culturally insensitive school mascots? Uh, this year, that is just an issue that seems to know no boundary of <laughs> debate. Well, I know that the Senate took the lead on that bill and that it's coming over, so I haven't seen it yet. Um, I know that our uh, House Ed Committee has been in the deep of it looking at universal school meals and some other mm -hmm. policy changes. Uh, we'll start taking a look at that bill when we get it and get through crossover. How about firearms uh, and uh, background check 
um, gun reform. The, the governor vetoed a bill, the, the Senate overrode him. Uh, perhaps there's not adequate support in the House, but you have a substitute bill that you're weighing right now that would compromise uh, at seven days uh, to complete a background check. That's right. So uh, we sent a bill to the governor that helped keep gu guns out of the hands of dangerous people. We did really good work in finding the policies that he has signaled earlier um, that he would support in some way. So I think that we put a package together that really helps keep Vermonters safe from gun violence. Everything that is an S-4, it was an S-30, was in the prior bill, except there's a couple of tweaks. And so we're glad that we can work with the governor to find a path forward and get this passed. <laughs>the governor signed a, a bill appropriating uh, $644,000 or so for humanitarian aid to help the people of Ukraine. You participated in that. That must have been uh, a bill signing unlike any other for you. I have been to some powerful bill signings. That was definitely um, one that will stick with me forever. So, as we said at the outset, we're halfway through. Uh, do you have any uh, target date in mind? Have you worked on anything with the pro tem? It's an election year. Sometimes that uh, means you are anxious to get out of the building. Do you have any sense of that yet this year? Uh, we are trying really hard to stick to our normal schedule. I will say that this year is, again, because of the pandemic and because of other factors, just very different. I feel like we're the, you know, we're, the four times uh, no longer apply <laughs> to where we are right now. Um, you know, just the roller coaster ride of where we've been with this pandemic, with funds from the federal government. We want to make sure we're being responsive. Uh, and we have some really big um, policy bills that we're working on that are really, uh, you, you know, things that we have to do, like redistricting. So we're going to be taking up um, in the House today and tomorrow redistricting that happens every 10 years. Uh, this week, we've been moving many climate and environmental bills across the, um, getting over to the Senate. Uh, we have the clean heat standard up for action today, which is one of our big climate change bills. And so uh, there's just a, a lot that we're, we're working on and uh, we'll be hoping to meet that goal to get out of here on time. Speaker Jill Krowinski, yeah, face masks are still mandatory at the Capitol, though perhaps for not much longer. We'll be right back.